What's up guys, welcome back to Libertaria Game Supply. Today I'm going to show you a Gate Guardian build that I've been working on a little bit. Uh, it's, I think it's supposed to be a control deck, just based on how kind of slow it is to get your fusion monsters out, unless somebody just has a better way of playing it than me, which is very possible. It just feels like the idea is to get a couple of your control fusion monsters out, back them with a little bit of control back row like our there can only be one and then slowly grind away your opponent's resources until you can just make that final attack and it can put up some huge attack power it just doesn't do a great job of doing it quickly as far as i've been able to find so we'll get into it quick here for our gate guardian pieces i got two kazogen one suogen and one sangha I wanted to keep these ratios pretty limited. You can recycle them well enough. Maybe that's part of the problem with why I'm not being able to get some of the fusion monsters out faster is because I've tried to keep this count pretty low, but it just feels so bricky having them in your hand and then not being able to do anything with them. Essentially, once you've drawn them, you're not gonna normal summon them, so you can only ever use your field spell to put them in the back row or use them as fodder for Sacred Sword to get some draw. And that just doesn't feel worth it to me to have more than just the bare minimum here. Here. The reason Kazogen is at 2 is because your two better fusion monsters that you would use are going to be both needing Kazogen, uh, so just having the extra copy in the deck makes it a little bit easier. And then we got three copies of Labyrinth Heavy Tank. This thing's pretty cool. It's also level 7, so fodder for Sacred Sword as well if you need it. On top of that, it can normal summon uh, without tributing. It just can't attack the turn you do that, but it remains a level 7, so you could overlay with it. Uh, if you wanted to. And then while it's on the field, it can take one of your Gate Guardian pieces out of your hand, your deck, or in your banner zone and put it in your spell and trap zone, which can then be used for fusion summoning. So it's kind of like the engine of the deck. You want to try to get this in the field spell on the field as quick as you can, because those are going to be what keeps putting the materials on the field for you to keep making your fusion monsters and gain advantage from there. Outside of that, the rest of the deck really doesn't do much. It's all like built to facilitate your fusion summoning and then we got triple shadow ghoul of the labyrinth so this thing's pretty much a terraforming you discard it to search the field spell while it's in the graveyard if you have the field spell active on your side of the field and your opponent's monster battles so you could attack it or it could attack you you can banish this card out of your graveyard uh, to pop it so it has a little bit of removal in there too, so kind of cool. We got Triple Elemental Hero Prisma. I was playing it at 2, I bumped it to 3 because you really don't have a normal summon in this deck other than Heavy Tank and Prisma, so you might as well max it out to hopefully get a hold of one or the other in your opening hand. And what it's used for is, it can be a Foolish Burial essentially, so it counts as like two copies of the same Gate Guardian piece. So once you've summoned it, you can reveal one of your fusion monsters, probably the big one, the three material one send one of your gate guardian pieces to the graveyard and then it becomes that gate guardian piece the reason i say it counts as two is because the monster in the graveyard can be used to summon the big gate guardian fusion monster and so you're going to get value by having say a sewage on the field and a sewage in the graveyard by having one of the other gate guardian pieces in the back row to make a fusion monster with prisma and then you still have that one in the graveyard to make the big fusion monster hopefully that same turn or if not the next turn then we got triple ash blossom it's just Three of a hand trap that I felt was pretty decent for a control build. Triple Labyrinth Wall, this is your field spell. So this does the same thing that the Labyrinth Heavy Tank does. When it's on the field once per turn, you can take one of your Gate Guardian pieces from your hand, deck, or banish zone and put it in your spell and trap zone to use it as material. It also uh, stacks, so it's a once per turn effect. But if you activate a new one over the top of the old one, you can get the effect again. So that's pretty cool in this deck because you really need those resources. So ideally, you're getting a few copies of this in your hand turn one just so you can get the board set up right away. It also has a little bit of added removal like the Shadow Ghoul. At the start of your opponent's battle phase, you can target a monster your opponent controls with 1600 attack or less and destroy it. That's super narrow, but it comes up so you might as well use it when you can. Uh, the one terraforming just to get to the field spell. We got the two Sacred Sword, it's just draw power, banish one of your sevens, draw two. And the Banish really isn't that bad because so much of the deck is built around getting your Banish monsters back out. So ideally you're banishing a Gate Guardian piece and then just recycling it right away. And then for our Gate Guardian spells, I got two of the Double Attack, Wind and Thunder, and one of the Rairyoku Guardian. Uh, I don't really like this card all that much. It fits in here just because on the occasional 
instance where it can be used. The attack manipulation is pretty cool. More often than not, it's going to be fodder for Foolish Burial Goods to then banish to get one of your banished Gate Guardian pieces back in your hand. Uh, all of the spell and traps have that effect. If they're in the graveyard, you can banish it to recycle one of your Gate Guardian pieces that is banished. And so just to add some flavor, I played the uh, Rai Ryoku rather than the third one of these, but the third one of these might be better. Uh, so the quick play spell here, double attack, wind and thunder. If you control a Gate Guardian monster, it just pops the card your opponent controls. That's really good. And usually turn one, I'm either looking to make the thunder and wind fusion to search this to have it in the back row, depending on what my opponent's plan, or I'm looking to make the water and wind one so that you can negate spell and traps. So this is a kind of an integral part of the strategy here. Then we got three fusion deployment. This card's super good in this deck. You reveal one of your fusion monsters in your extra deck. One of the monsters that's listed on it, you can then special summon from your deck to the field. So it's just going to be there kind of like Prisma to cheat out one of your Gate Guardian pieces for free, essentially. The only thing is it locks you into fusion summoning for the rest of the turn, which isn't really bad, but it can become annoying. I just think the upside is so much higher than that downside. Three of, for sure, wouldn't change it personally. We got the two Foolish Burial Goods, so as I mentioned earlier, this is just going to be to send your Gate Guardian Spell and Trap cards to the graveyard if you don't need them anymore or if you're just in a tight spot because you're looking to get that Banish effect to recycle a Gate Guardian piece. Being able to put them back in your hand means you can make the big Gate Guardian, so it could be super handy to be able to get one or two of the other little fusions up by having to banish stuff and then being able to put the stuff back in your hand in order to banish it again to make the big Gate Guardian. We got the three hero lives. Uh, turn one, it'll cut your life points in half and then summon your Prisma, and then I've already explained why we want the Prisma on the field. That life point cut also synergizes with the Ryoku Guardian pretty well. It just makes it live, so there's that added bonus. We got the one foolish burial, because having it in the graveyard is still good for making your fusion monsters. We're just going to be sending our Gate Guardian pieces with this. And then there can be only one at three, I thought was just a super cool inclusion once you realize that nothing in this deck has the same type as like almost anything else. So if we take a quick look through here, we've got Spellcaster, Aqua, Thunder, Machine, Zombie, Warrior, and Zombie, and our two Zombies never get summoned. They're like hand trap or hand effect type cards. Then if you look in the extra deck, you got Warrior, Thunder, Spellcaster, Aqua, and then the rest of it you can decide on your own what to play, so it's not really relevant, but same deal. Machine, uh, Spellcaster, Psychic, Machine, and then these are all Fiends. So you can really make use of this. There can be only one. Have it not really interrupt your play almost at all, and then it usually will mess up your opponent pretty good. So I just really like that this deck could take such great advantage of this card. I wanted to play it at three. It works pretty well. I like it. We got the two Imperms. It's just one of the best cards in the game. It's a hand trap if you end up going second. If you go first, it's still pretty good back row. And it works kind of similarly to the Jurai Gumo. I'm just now realizing uh, with the effect negation in the zone that you set it to to activate it if you ended up going first. And what I mean is the Prey of the Jurai Gumo summons itself in the same column that it's in in the Spell and Trap zone. So like if you set it you know, in this zone and you activate it, it summons itself to this zone and then it can pop a monster that's in that same column on your opponent's side of the field. And Imperm does kind of the same thing. It negates a Spell or Trap in the same column. So. That's kind of cool. Uh, the Jiragumo, when it's on the field, is a normal monster, level 5, 2100 attack, so that's pretty decent. Uh, that's decent attack power. That pop effect is, it's a little bit cheesy, a little bit gimmicky, because it's supposed to be like in the anime when the spider comes up and takes the monster. So you have to like hope your opponent plays into that, but it's still, it's pretty fun. And then of course it has that same effect if it's in the graveyard, you can banish it to get one of your gate guardian pieces back, so also pretty relevant there. And then heading into the extra deck, I'll cover this half first. So this is all totally up to you what you want to play. You're probably going to pick a couple rank sevens. Zeus is just a good generic extra deck monster. And then a couple link monsters to finish it out. I know I've seen people playing the Illusion of Chaos and the uh, Dark Magician, uh, the level one Spirit of the Dark Magician. Uh, and then you'd have access to like, uh, is it Link Karibo and Relink Anima, Relinquished Anima. So you could go that route to open up the extra deck a little bit more. Uh, I just personally was not interested in summoning anything but the Gate Guardian fusion, so I just filled it up to fill it up. You could put whatever you want in there. But then for the Gate Guardian pieces, I play two of each of them. I don't really think you need three of any of them because the game will not last long enough for you to summon three of any of them, really. They all have a common effect where they float, so when they get destroyed, all of the two material ones will summon a 
one of these, and then the three material one can summon one of these, or it can summon the original Gate Guardian also. I don't play it in the main deck, you could just because it's awesome, but it's not good. It's not a good card at all. For their individual effects, the Water and Thunder can reduce attack an attack of an opponent's monster to zero. The Wind and Water can negate a spell or trap once per chain, twice in a turn. So this thing is super good. You can negate a spell, your opponent has to you know, stop whatever they're doing. They'll try to activate a new one in a new chain, you can negate it again. This can stop a turn completely if you pick the right spells or traps or whatever. So very good extra deck monster. And then we got two thunder and wind. This thing searches your gate guardian spell or trap. So it's just any of the ones that mention the Sangha, Kazajin, and Suajin. So it's going to be searching that quick play pop spell. It can search your field spell. I can search your Gurjuragumo, you know, whatever you want. This thing is also very good. And then the big boy gate guardians combined. It can negate and destroy an effect that targets a card on your side of the field. So that's good. It is pretty weak to non-targeting destruction it's pretty easy to clear this thing it can't really be attacked over super easily outside of effects but uh you know a dark hole ruins your board so that kind of sucks that's something to think about i guess but all in all the deck is just meant to be fun anyway right and it's pretty fun i might build this thing in real life because it's looking like it's also going to be very very cheap this build right here might be like 30 bucks if you wanted to cut some of the expensive extra deck stuff out, which might only be the Zeus uh, as a card that's over $10, then you're probably looking at like less than 50 bucks to build this whole thing. I think all of the new support for Gate Guardians or Super Rares are going to be a couple dollars. So all in all, I think this is a win for Legacy support. I would give it a shot. It's definitely a, a fun time, especially if you were a fan of the anime back in the day. It feels very much like a deck that would have existed in the show. Like The effects are very reminiscent of that. But anyway, that's the deck profile. Hope you enjoyed it. Stick around, subscribe. I got a new video for you every single week. Like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't like it. It's not going to hurt my feelings. And happy deck building. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one. Molten fire!